Mark Ferrer, and title is director of co-director of the Faculty Resource Center, Faculty Professional Development Director, and SLO Coordinator. I taught here in 1970 through 72 as an adjunct when I was a graduate student at the university. I've always wanted to add that. I'd been doing that at the university. I've been teaching for 10 years before I came here in a lab at the university. There were only three of us doing it at the time, so it was fairly fairly early in that process at the university. But I had been working for 10 years past that, had developed quite a lot of materials that were computer-based, taught my classes only in computer labs, and had my students write multimedia papers instead of regular papers. They'd already been able, when this actual building was built, the LRC, they were able to put in a Kylab, but the Kylab was only for faculty use. There were no computers available for students to use on campus at all. We were able to get funding. I wrote lots of grants during that period of time, and we got a lot of money in to train people. So first we had to train faculty to use equipment, uh, but actually before that we had to convert the Kylab into an open lab for faculty and students, which we did. We didn't have the internet here as well until 1990. I showed up and, and uh, George Gregg, uh, who was the second in command in what was called IRD then, which became IT afterwards, uh, George was a phenomenal guy. He was the first person informally to be on the internet ever. And the reason he was is he was the only guy that read any of the manuals in computer science at the university. So he was their lab tech because nobody else knew how to use any of the huge computers. And he sent himself an email over ARPANET and it started the, and that's where the internet came from. So George was very committed to the internet and we all said to him, believe it or not, we all said to him, George, what, what are we going to do with the internet? And the FRC's first residence was uh, the humanities building in the old TV studio. We had our offices there, we did all of our training in what used to be the, the stage area. Uh, we had all of the video work we needed to do, the sound work. We had a sound, actually a sound room, and this was a sound stage. So we had a wonderful time there. So when we got everybody computers, uh, we then had to teach them all how to use them. And the tools that we used essentially were, th were the, the office suite, uh, and uh, a lot of page maker because desktop publishing was a very new and powerful and kind of revolutionary thing about faculty taking on the responsibility for presenting material to students in a way that was visually engaging. There was no online college here. We didn't offer any online courses. We had no supplementation that was online. And this was in the late 90s. And, and we'd started working just in the FRC. David Wong had, had taken a big interest in this. He became the central figure in all of this, really. He is th the major force behind this, the, you know, the college's effort in terms of the technology and the support for learning and the training. He and, uh, we put together in in a year, 40 courses, that may not seem like a lot, but it put us in the forefront in California. I thought SLOs were great, and I, they were great, actually, at, at, at the start. And then they became a compliance issue. We went from zero to full SLOs, full PSLOs, and full ISLOs within four years. SLOs are only about student learning. They're student learning outcomes. So we changed a lot of the methodology that people were using. People were really extraordinary here that managed to connect with the students who were not originally really available as students. They were here looking and wondering. Um, these people all found ways to connect, so they helped me a great deal. And then I devoted my time to helping them use technology to reach students, which I think eventually is, is probably where we're going to end up anyway. I mean, technology is in everything that we do now.